Good evening. We gather to tonight to enter into the Lenten season, a journey that is internal as well as external, where we equip ourselves with a willing heart, head, and spirit. We are scattered and together in this season. Reflecting back a year ago, we sat together in this room without masks and together received the imposition of ashes. While Lent is a season of transformation, we could never have imagined a year ago how we have each been transformed today. Ash Wednesday is different, and yet it is the same. Ash Wednesday plays an important role in helping us make meaning in the brokenness of our lives. It is a time when we seek reconciliation, forgiveness for ourselves and for others. This year, indeed, we are aware of the fragility of life. And even though we cannot share ashes in the same way that we have become accustomed, let us engage in a ritual that draws us close to the elements of creation and reminds us that we are part of creation in all of its beauty and its brokenness. Tonight, we invite you to use the small bag of soil that was put in your Lenten bag. If you don't have that, we invite you to get a, a little bit of dirt or sand. It might be hard to dig that up outdoors right now, but maybe from a house plant, you can get some soil, just a little bit. You'll also need a small cup of water that we'll use later in the service. We invite you also to light a candle, perhaps the one that you received in the Lenten care package or one that you have around your home. Join me in prayer. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you formed us and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Today, I will be reading from Joel chapter two. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes such as never was in ancient times, nor will ever be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return with return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and God relents from ascending calamity. Who knows? God may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders and gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may get praise from people. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get it. They will get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand, what your right hand is doing so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't be like hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they will get. But when you pray, Go to your room, shut the door, and pray for your father who is present in that secret place. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put a sad face like hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know they're fasting. I assure you that they have their their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face. Then you won't look like you're fasting to people, but only to your father who is present in that secret place. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear siblings in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to observe a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. To make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now pray before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that this soil may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to Grab the bag of soil that you received in your Lenten care package or the soil that you have in your home from a plant. And I invite you to hold that in your hand as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. 
as we feel these grains of sand and dirt in our hands, make them be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This time I invite you to open up the, the package or to pour the dirt into um, a plate like I have here. And then we're going to mix a little water with that. the sign of the cross. Let us pray. Holy God, as we feel this elemental part of who we are, we remember you created us, shaped us from dust in the palm of your hand. Someday we will return to dust. Return to the palm of your hand once again, held and loved forever. We lament in this moment the grittiness of life and need for healing, the difficult and necessary process of transformation. Mark us as your own. Remold us again and again as your people. Let the recognition of our own need break us open yet again for the sake of others, for the sake of the world. Amen. Let us enter into a time of silence and let us confess those things that we need to confess to God as we enter into this time and process together. May the Almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
As we leave this space that has been created for us, we go into this season of Lent challenged, renewed, and strengthened. May we find ways in these days to renew ourselves, as well as to reconnect and connect with God and neighbor. Let us go into this night and let us face the new day that is before us with strength and hope and assurance. Thanks be to God. Amen.